Hello, and welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and today I want to talk all about board games and card games. I love playing board games and card games not only with my children, I also like using them with my clients. Part of why I like to do this is because it's such a great way to work on so many different social skills. So when you play board games and card games, you automatically work on things like following the rules and even establishing the rules, figuring out what the rules are. So for instance, when you're playing a game like Uno, you have to establish when you put down a draw four, do you then pick up? Do you pick up one card if you don't have a card the right color in your hand or do you continue to pick up until you get the right color? All of these are different ways that you can play Uno, but you need to actually talk and discuss before you start playing the game to make sure you're all following the same rules and on the same page. This is also a great way for kids to work on paying attention. So you have to pay attention to figure out when your turn is. You have to pay attention to what other people are putting down. If it's a particular game that requires you to know who who has what cards in their hand, that sort of thing. And another great thing that you work on when you're playing board games and card games is learning how to win graciously and how to lose graciously. It's one thing to be able to learn how to lose graciously, but it's actually just as important to know how to win in a way that doesn't impact other people to the point where they're feeling awful and you're rubbing it in their face that you've won the game, but you also want to make sure that you can figure out a way that you can lose the game um, graciously. There are so many different things that you can do with games. You don't have to actually follow the rules. You can um, establish your own rules, change the rules up. That's um, great for teaching kids how to be flexible with the, the rules. Sometimes parents get caught in the doldrums of always playing games they don't like, like Candyland. You don't have to play Candyland if you don't want to play Candyland. There are so many other games out there that you don't have to be stuck with a game that annoys you. You can try a different sort of game. If you go onto websites like Mindware, they have a bunch of different games that all work on uh, lots of different skills. So I wanted to just tell you about a few of my favorite games, things that I really enjoy, and things that I have uh, been playing with my own family and my own client. So one of my the most popular games that people have been playing um, in my private practice is Connect Four Launchers. So it's Connect Four, but there is a physical piece to it, and I think that's why um, some of my clients really gravitate towards it. So you actually fling the Connect Four pieces. Instead of dropping them in, you fling them into this uh, either the top or the bottom of this tray. And the goal is to try and get uh, four in a row, just like in regular Connect Four. But there is something about the physical, the physicality of that game that kids really um, enjoy. And even though we are playing and it it can get um, kind of busy because they're flinging the Connect Fours and all the things are flinging all over the place, but there is also an element of learning how to control how far the Connect Four piece will go. There's an element of, uh, you know, being able to take turns to negotiate, well, what, how are we going to figure out um, what can we change the rules up? And like, if we get all the ro- uh, the front row all done, then that's how you win versus the back row. And there, there's so many opportunities to just play around with that and be playful in that. And, uh, and it's okay to not follow the rules in the game as long as everybody who's playing agrees to follow the different rules that you've agreed to. Another game that I really enjoy is Uno, and my husband recently came back from Korea and he brought back a a Korean version of Uno called One Card. It's adorable, Um, but it's really fun. And it's interesting because there are things when you put a draw four down, it can feel really overwhelming to some people. And, you know, you can get annoyed and irritated, but how do you deal with that? And understand that while somebody may put a draw four on you, you may have an opportunity to put a draw two or a draw four on somebody else or given an opportunity to skip. So lots of different opportunities there, lots of great teachable moments for how do you handle it when somebody does something that you don't like? How can you um, lose graciously? How can you um, figure out how to be okay if you have to pick up more multiple cards? And, you know, if you lose the game, how do you lose graciously? So Uno is one of those games I used to play it all the time as a school counselor, and I still play it with my children regularly. And I just, it's one of those the rules can be so different and so many people have so many different versions of the rules so it's a great game 
learning about following directions and following the rules and cooperating and figuring out what the rules of the game will be. The last set of games I wanted to mention is Peaceable Kingdom. So for those kids who are really struggling with being able to cooperate or kids who are struggling with winning and losing graciously, a great place to start is the, the Peaceable Kingdom games because every single Peaceable Kingdom game, all the whole entire series of games that they offer is all cooperative. So in order for anybody to win the game, you have to cooperate, which is really neat. And it leads to some really interesting gameplay. And it sounds like it could be, you know, sort of boring. It's always cooperative, but the games are so varied and so different. It makes it really fun. So I actually just played Hoot Owl Hoot with one of my families. And I also love playing that with my own kids. I love playing Lemonade Shake Up, Cauldron Quest. We have so many Peaceable Kingdom games. Um, so many fun different ways, mole rats in space, so many fun different ways to play and all work together as a team. And there's something very satisfying about uh, winning the game and knowing that you all worked together to do that. So I would highly recommend looking at some Peaceable Kingdom games. They're actually owned by Mindware. So I would look into those games, if, especially if you have some, if you're working with somebody or you have somebody in your family who's really struggling with winning and losing graciously. This way everybody is cooperating and though you can win and lose together and you can demonstrate and use that as a teachable moment to show how to win and lose graciously. So um, below I will have some information about some of my favorite games and links to some of the games that I mentioned including Peaceable Kingdom. And if you have any suggestions for me about topics you'd like me to cover or any games you want um, to know more, any games you want to know more about, I'd be happy to uh, write to you and give you a little bit more information. Feel free to subscribe to Calm and Connected Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And I will talk to you next time. Have a great day.